much so. My eyelashes are excited and I hear a bumblebee. Stay back. We're going to read Sonnet 14 today if I can actually use my right eyeball. There we go. I think I got it out, whatever it was. Lovely. Have I? No. Yeah. Hello. Sorry about that. I don't have a makeup artist to hand to check that I'm looking fabulous for these videos, so one is having to do it themselves. Great, so Sonnet 14, we're going to tuck straight in. Not from the stars do I my judgment pluck, and yet methinks I have astronomy, but not to tell of good or evil luck, of plagues, of deaths, or seasons quality, nor can I fortune to brief minutes tell, pointing to each his thunder, rain, and wind, or say with princes if it shall go well, by aught predict that I in heaven find. But from thine eyes my knowledge I derive, and constant stars, in them I read such art as truth and beauty shall together thrive, if from thyself to store thou wouldst convert, or else of thee this I prognosticate. Thy end is truth's and beauty's doom and date. Ba -ba -ba. So that's Sonnet 14. And just following on from yesterday's um, extended study of it, this one's a little bit more romantic. Um, well, I think, anyway, in the first half, the uh, sestet, as it were. So uh, he kind of, uh, just to explain it a little bit, if you would like a bit more clarity and explanation, not from the stars do I my judgment pluck, and yet methinks I have astronomy. He's saying that he can kind of, not from the stars does he tell his future, uh, does he know what the future holds, but he feels like he has some sort of prophesizing, I think that's a word, ability. And he, he then goes on kind of to say, oh, but not to tell, you know, of good or evil luck, you know, what luck is in store for everyone, to kind of predict plagues or, you know, what the, you know, what we'll get from um, good weather in terms of farming and growing crops and all that malarkey. Um, and then, you know, nor can I, f nor can I fortune in brief minutes tell pointing to each as thunder, rain and wind, predicting lots of different people's future essentially, um, and when they're gonna have thunder, rain and wind in their life. Again, this is not golden, I'm not a Shakespeare total expert, but I have some idea, and this is what is coming to mind for me. Um, it might be springing all sorts of different things to you. Hello everyone, welcome by the way. Um, but yeah, for me, that's what it's saying. Um, or say with princes, if it shall go well, by ought predict that I in heaven find. So, my copy says, by oft predict. But I was doing a bit of research into that, and a lot of other editions have changed it to ought. And I think that makes more sense. So I changed it to ought as well, because I'm a badass. Um, and what does Shakespeare know, honestly? So, um, I can hear that B again. Back off, Buster. I'm doing a sonnet chat. Good. Um, so yeah, and then after that line, by, by all predict that I in heaven find, he kind of turns his attention from the stars saying, you know, I can't, I can't read the stars, I don't know what your future, I can't tell this, I don't know that, but what I do know, and I did kind of, I tried to get that across in my reading, but from thine eyes, so what he's saying is from your eyes, that's where I get my knowledge, that's where I can see the future bit of ad-lib there and constant stars he calls them constant stars i mean in this day and age we don't really woo people if you don't know what i mean by woo i mean like flirt with people and court them again that's a very old-fashioned term i don't know why i thought people would know more about what court means and wooing means if you court someone or woo someone you're kind of um i suppose you're dating them and trying and buying them flowers and trying to flirt with them and trying to um you have Stephen! Oh my god, I hope you're alright mate. All right, Steve. <laughs> Fellow bingo caller there. Um, Ex-bingo caller. I don't know if you're still bingo calling. I think you were doing management last time I heard. Anyway, um, yeah, so 
He's saying uh, constant stars. Yeah, wooing is basically flirting with someone. And obviously at this point, side note, going back to yesterday's sonnet, sonnet 13, Shakespeare B was using a lot more um, of yous and directly addressing someone. Now, back in those days, if you used the word you, it was a little bit more um, intimate, shall we say, as opposed to thou and thy and thine and all this sort of thing. But in Sonnet 14, he goes back to uh, thy, to say thy or thou? What does he say? Where is it? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, thyself, thine eyes. He kind of goes back on that a bit, which kind of, as we've come quite a few sonnets in now, I think it's quite clear to see that he's maybe attaching himself a little bit too much to this, um, this young male. Um, and I think in this sonnet, because he doesn't talk directly to him, and he kind of goes off on one on his imagination and lists all these things he doesn't know about, he's kind of sidetracking a little bit, but then he does come straight back in to the to his eyes and focus his attention on who he's aiming this at, which I think is is interesting because it's like he's I'm not I'm not looking at that I'm trying to be romantic and blah 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 but I'm gonna look at you when the time is right. I did not articulate that very well, but what I was basically trying to say is that by saying constant stars, I think if someone called my eyes constant stars, I would be a bit like these old things. Stop it. So um yeah, it's quite nice. And then he says in them I read such art, like oh. Who doesn't want to be art? Look at me, I'm a work of art, yeah. Um, as truth and beauty, both of those things are just lovely. Doesn't everyone want to be truthful and beautiful? Um, shall together thrive. And again, that use of language, together thrive. It's soft, it's floaty, it plays on the tuz and the thuz and the vuz, which are all very lovely velvety sounds. Um, and together thrive if from thyself to store that wouldst convert so if from thyself so again what he's saying is here if you stop thinking about just yourself and turned your attention if you converted your attention to store which to me means like store stuff store what he's saying there is basically if you preserved your looks and your beauty and your life and your image um that'd be grand <laughs> Or else of thee I prognosticate, lovely big word there, sounds like something out of Harry Potter, doesn't it? Um, or else of thee, this I prognosticate, so what he's saying, otherwise, what's going to happen with you, I prophesize. So basically prognosticate is like prophesizing about something. Um, thy end is truth and beauty's doom and date. So if he ends, truth and beauty don't stand a chance, and then the day that, the day that you end... Truth and beauty ends as well. Oh, how romantic. Stop it. Oh. That's my taking from it. Take from that what you will. Um, again, I might be wrong on a few a few counts. Um, and I did put this on a side note on my YouTube channel, on my um, sonnet reading yesterday, because there are, every edition of the sonnets kind of, not every edition, but lots of different writers and editors have had a go at printing copies of this. And it's the same with Shakespeare's plays as well, but words get changed, um, punctuation gets changed from like the first folio audition. The first folio was the very first edition of all of Shakespeare plays and poems just printed. Um, and you can still get copies of that, I've got a copy back home. And you can, um, I like to compare and contrast, and I actually have about, oh my gosh, five different copies of Shakespeare's Bumblebee! Bumblebee! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that hurt my belly. Oh, panic. Panic over. Um, copies of Shakespeare's text, just because I like to compare and contrast. So if I'm studying a monologue or a character or a sonnet, it's good to have a little look at what other um, people's interpretations are of the punctuation and the words, because that might have a might help you understand it more um, or read it better um, and yeah I think it's always worth investigating a little bit further rather than just sticking to the one editor's copy and edition um, so yes there we have it thank you so much for joining have a lovely rest of your day I hope you all are staying safe and staying indoors and I look forward to tomorrow when we are going to be reading sonnet 15 15 is after 14, and after 15 we'll be reading, um, oh, Sonnet 16. Splendid. 
See you next time on hashtag Pippa Does Sonnets. Adios.